there and welcome to my cha 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 channel. So today, look what I got. If you're new to my channel, I do unboxing and food reviews in the car. I do a lot of daily harvest. So you may want to subscribe because you clicked on this video for a reason. I'm always honest and blunt. This is not sponsored. And so um, before I say anything, I do have a Patreon now. So if you want to support me in this channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you look into that. And uh, I'll leave a link below the video to my Patreon. And I'll also leave another link below the video to all my daily harvest videos. Because I've done a lot, I'm doing a lot, and I'll continue to do a lot. So, yeah. So, look below the video on all kinds of links. And so, there'll probably be a link in the description of the video as well, as well as the comments. But um, right now, reviewing this, it's the Daily Harvest. It's their new bake line. You bake this in the oven, you know, put this in the microwave. And it's chickpea plus coconut curry. And I did bake this for 450. It says 22 to 27 minutes. Mine was closer to 27 minutes. And I did stir it like three times, okay? I wasn't crazy about the smell. I love, in the FYI, I love Indian food, okay? And I was not, like, the smell... But then I went outside to check them out and I came back in and then I smelled the house. I was like, okay, that smells pretty good. So it condenses a lot. If you want to see what it looks like, I'll even leave it, leave the picture on the thumbnail, what it looks like frozen before it is baked. Or you can also go to my Instagram where I will also show a picture of what this looks like because it, it really condenses a lot when you bake it. Like it, it was more prettier in color and look like more but this is what it looks like it's really creamy looking yes I'm gonna try it so how's everyone doing today should I do story time if you're new to my channel a lot of times I do story time so we're gonna put some of this in a bowl I should get some rice with this but I didn't Make sure I get every little, here's a piece of cauliflower. What is, is that sweet potato? Oh, I hope that is. I love sweet potatoes. Speaking of sweet potatoes, you ever had grilled sweet potatoes? Oh, it's so good. So good. I make um, fire roast or grilled artichokes. And a lot of times I'll make it with grilled sweet potatoes. And I use vegan mayonnaise. And I make like a garlic aioli with the vegan mayonnaise. I take like fresh garlic and lemon juice. And sometimes I use grilled or roasted garlic with the lemon juice with the garlic. Vegan mayonnaise, roasted or grilled uh, garlic, lemon juice. And I make that. And then I add a couple drops of balsamic vinegar. And then I put, I use that as a dip on the thin sliced um, sweet potato that I grill. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm out of it till. Let me get a swig of water. Oh. It's wet here in Texas. It's been raining. It's supposed to be nicer today. I should have reviewed this yesterday. Or tomorrow it's supposed to be nicer. I think I'm still sick because I got the Rona, the 19. Yeah, that thing. And it's just affected me. I think this has cashew butter and cream in it, does it? Yeah, it has cashew, and I believe it was coconut cream. But it looks really creamy. Can you hear that? Mmm, I just bent into a sweet potato. Might get another one. Treat yourself, right? Okay, let me try the, the chickpeas. Another reason why I wanted to bake it like the 27 mark is because chickpeas, like I did not want them to be firm or too too firm and not cooked. Mm. I wasn't crazy about the cauliflower in this. Good thing I don't see a whole lot. This reminds me, 
it's really, really creamy. Okay. Like, really creamy. This reminds me... I don't know if you've ever had Indian food before, if you have. Have you ever had Sag Paneer? It reminds me of the spices, a little bit of Sag Paneer. But instead, you replaced the paneer um, and made it not so creamy. Because it is creamy, but not so gravy-ish. And you replaced the paneer with, um, I think it's called uh, chenna masala, which is the chickpeas. If you took chenna masala and took some of those the side paneer without the cheese and just mix it up a little. That's what it tastes like to me. It's good. It's not the best Indian food I ever had. <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. But, but, it's creamy. It does taste like Indian food. The curry is not very strong though. Which can be a good or bad thing. I think I just tasted some spinach. With that, with the sauce. Yeah. Oh, it has moringa in it. Well, should I have any ingredients to you? Because it's a lot. It has film Greek. I do like it. I think it would taste really good with some basmati rice. I would definitely not use regular rice. Because like a lot of daily harvest items... They feel like more of a side dish, and you still want something to bring it up to a level. I think this would be really, really good on top of some um, basmati rice. And make sure you season the basmati rice with, like, cumin seed. And I can't think of the other spice, but I would, I would really, really recommend... You put this on top of some basmati rice and make sure that you, when you make your basmati rice, um, add some cumin. And toasted. And cumin. I think this would just really make this dish, like, really make this dish. I've never had, like, um, a vegan paneer. I haven't had paneer in a while. I used to love it. I used to I'm sure I would still love it, but mm. the chickpeas make it hearty, but mm. I can't stress enough that this is really, really good. It's really creamy. It's not spicy or hot in any way. It's made me mildly warm, warming, but would I get this again? Yeah, and um, I'd probably add some some more cream. Like if I make this again, I think I would add some frozen spinach. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Okay, I definitely put it on top of some basmati rice that's um, cooked with cumin seed. Some cilantro might be good on this, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It is good. It just needs, like, it needs that extra cook it, you know, kick it up a notch. Like a lot of, like I said, Daily Harvest products, uh, in my opinion, need it. Um, it's really good. The chickpeas make it more hearty, but... <laughs> we just sound redundant, but, yeah. Um... And although it's really, really creamy, I wish it was just a little bit more saucy because you can see it's kind of like, not, I hate to say dried out, but stiff, you know, whatever. But yeah, it's, let me try the, the peas. Mmm. The green peas in this are really, really, really go good with this. I like it a lot. I think they should just make a little less on the chickpea, but I think that's the main, yeah, chickpea coconut curry. And again, this is what it looks like. Um, it's not too earthy. 
Like I said, I mean, when I first smelt it coming from the oven, it did not smell very good. But when I walked outside, I got some, I got the mail. And when you're concerned, I'm like, wow, the house smells really good. Um, does it just like authentic Indian food? No, it doesn't taste like authentic, but it's, it's pretty close. I've, I've had African food before only one time. And there's something about this that, rem this, that reminds me just a little bit of African food. I had something in um, an African restaurant and yeah, I don't know what it is though, but it's just, a, it, 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 it's reminding me of a flavor, even though I've only had it once, African food. Um, I wish there was more sweet potatoes. Um, yeah, on a scale of one to 10, um, well on the, cause I have, I think I have one more. Yeah, I do. I have one more daily harvest bake to review and I believe that's the plantain and I have high hopes for that. I think that's probably going to be my, my favorite, but out of all, so you put that aside, all the other bakes that they have, this so far is my top favorite. So I can't say it's my favorite out of all the bakes because I haven't tried the plantain yet. But put the plantain aside. Look at all the rest of their bakes that they have. This is my favorite one. And again, it's the uh, chickpea plus coconut curry. But on a scale of 1 to 10, um, I'm probably going to give this a solid... Because I did review the one the other day, and I did like it a lot. And I kind of gave it a high score, but I kind of wish I wouldn't have. Because I like this one even better. And that was, what was that one? That had rice in it. I don't even remember now. I'm still getting, I'm still getting over my, yeah. Um, I give it a solid 8 out of 10. It's not the best thing. I'm not going to say, oh, you got to, oh, it's just so great. No. There's other, I, FYI, there's a lot. I, I hate to say this. There's a lot of Daily Harvest products that I do not like. But there are a few out there that I like a lot. This is not one of them that I like a lot, but it's an eight. Would I buy it a lot? No. But would I buy it again? Yeah, most definitely I would buy it again. Um, and I, <coughs> excuse me, I think the sodium level might be high, but it doesn't taste salty. Yeah, a thousand milligrams. And that's another thing. The serving is for one. You get quite a bit. I mean, I would not recommend, I mean, I, I guess if that's all you ate was this, maybe, but again, I can't stress enough that if you get this, do yourself a favor and make some basmati rice and put some cumin seed in it, okay? Um, but yeah, I don't know if I should do story time. Let me, let me, let me think. I'm going to try to do story time, um, only because I know some of my viewers have asked for story time and, you know, I, I figure if you don't want to hear story time, you can just stop the video now, <laughs> right? But for those that want to stay, um, so, um, I, I'm bad with dates, but I would, it was at least five years ago. I had met this guy on a chat, um, thing. It's like a chat, uh, what it was, a, it was an app. It was a chat app. And, um, uh, we became, you know, pretty good friends over the, the chat and he was complaining that, um, that his, uh, that his parents didn't treat him very, wasn't treating him right. Even though he's an adult, it's like, you know, whatever, like if your parents don't treat you right, you could always get your own place. Right. But he was just saying, you know, he doesn't have a car and he has depression and I have depression too. And so, um, so I went like two towns over and in the country to go pick him up. He lived pretty far out in the country, actually. Not extremely far, but far enough, right? So I picked this guy up and I let him come stay with me in my home. And so, um, you know, one thing that one thing I did like about him is he made me laugh, you know, not like a lot, but you know, he did kind of help, you know, pull up my depression. And I think I helped pull up his depression too. But, um, all I know is he stayed here for, I want to say like two weeks or so. And I noticed on my driver's license, um, cause I had gotten a new driver's license 
and I think I needed to do something or a company needed my driver's license or something and it wasn't valid because my driver's license didn't have my zip code on it, okay? And so um, I had to go to the DMV office, Department of Motor Vehicle, to, and I'm sorry if, like, I pause a little bit because I have to think because this was, like, way over five years ago. Plus, I just got over the Rona, the Rona 19, COVID. Um, and so I went to the Department of Motor Vehicle and... I had to fill out, I, ha, I I had to pay that, even though it was their fault, they didn't put my zip code on my driver's license, they made me pay again for, like, as if I lost my license, right? And so, um, I did all that, and I didn't think nothing of it, I didn't think nothing of it, right? And then, so, we came back home, and then, eventually, he was like, well, he was like, I think I need to go back to my mom and dad's house. And so, I actually didn't go all the way back to his house, I only went to his house, I think, once. And, um... Now that I think about it, he was acting a little bit strange, but not like extremely strange. So anyway, let me tell you. So I met up with his mother in the two two towns over, but not in the country. It was just still a good drive, right? And I met up with his mother, and he's in my car, and I dropped him off. And then I think it was just like maybe a few days later, I get a phone call from Target, the Target store, Target Corporation, right? And they're like, did you just apply? Or, we're calling you because we showed that you just applied for a credit card with us. And I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't apply for a credit card. And they're like, yeah, well, you had a credit card with us, but um, it was shut down because of inactivity because you didn't use it. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I just don't go to Target that much. I was like, but again, why are you calling me? Like, what's going on, right? They're like, well, that's just it. When you had a credit card with us, you told us your mother's name was this. And we just got an application for a new credit card. But on the application, it shows the mother's name is this. That's not your mother's maiden name. I'm like, well, I didn't know. I didn't apply for a credit card. So I was like, well, what's the number on the, the application? This was done online, by the way. And I was like, what's the number on the application? And they were nice enough to give me the phone number. Well, after I got the phone with Target, I went on my phone to call this number to say, you know, who are you? Why, how did you get my information? Why did you apply for a Target credit card? And I told Target, I was like, don't don't send that card out, you know. And um, so when I put my number in, if you put a number in your phone and like to your friend, it's automatically going to populate. Like let's say your name is, your friend's name is Tina, right? And then you put the number into Tina's number. It's just automatically going to populate Tina because it reads the number. So as I'm typing it in, it says his name, right? His name is Jason. So um, it populates his name. And I call him up. I'm like, Jason. I was like, um, I just got a phone call from Target saying that I applied for a credit card, which I didn't. And they screwed up on the mother's maiden name, whoever did this. I said, but they put the number as my number as your number and that's another reason why target called me too is because they recognize they're like because they knew my old number you see what i'm saying like when i actually had a target red card before it was shut down for because i didn't use it right not because i got in, did something bad or whatever so um he was just like f you f you he just got like really really like um belligerent and aggressive and you know whatever over the phone and i was like what the hell so i called up the the police department i live in a small town and they're not very friendly okay especially to people like me if you know what i mean yeah so um is an elderly elderly guy so nice he comes over to the house he takes the report and um i, I, I told him what had happened he was like well did you give this guy information i was like i don't understand how how did he get he knows my name he knows my phone number he knows my address i was like but how did he get my social security number well, he was like trying to probe me and question me. And, and he was like, you know, asked me, he's like, would you ever like in a, um, a situation where like, and I was like, I figured it out. I was like, I was at the DMV office because I remember him being right there. Like when I was filling out that application, right, for my driver's license, he was right there. And so I would imagine, I mean, to this day, I don't know, but I'm guessing that he has probably a photographic memory because all he had to do was remember well, I guess he remembered my birthday too, my birthday and my social, or maybe he wrote it down and I wasn't looking. I don't know. 
but that's what we think what happened. So they took the report, and the next thing I know is, is I'm getting all kinds of phone calls and things in the mail asking me if I'm applying for a credit card. Now keep in mind, Target knows my old number, so they can so they know that something's fishy. But if he applies for a um, I'm so, maybe I shouldn't be going into story time because I'm just not mentally. I'm just so lethargic. I'm still run down. So um, if he if he applies for um, companies that I've never been with, they're not going to know. They're going to think that's my number, right? And anyway, so um, the police is not helping me. I have an investigator, and he was just like, there's nothing we can do unless you get those fraudulent applications. And Target would not give me the fraudulent application. And all these companies that would call me up, I'd be like, I need the application so I can give that to the police department so that they can see that there's applications that are going in my name for credit cards that I'm not. I was like, but we need evidence. You know, I'm just like, well, I just got a phone call. Well, who called you, right? So then these companies were telling me, they're like, well, just have the investigator call us. You know, this is the fraud department at so-and-so credit card. I would go down there and the investigator would never call. He'd be like, I'm not, I'm not calling them. I'm like, well, if you call them, they would tell you that an application was made in my name. And then you'll be able then, because you're the police, to get the application and then do the research, you know? And I said, because I'm sure Jason's address is on that application so they would send him the so they would send him the credit card to him because if they send it to me he can't use it right so um I dealt with this one lady with this one um bank and I think it was a credit card too anyway she felt bad for me she goes you know your your, your investigators are total butthole you know he hasn't contacted me or nothing so she called him she was like, I left messages after messages because I called her back like periodically and, and talked to her. She's like, you know what? He's never answered. He's never called me back. Like I can never get a hold of him or nothing. So um, it was getting worse. Like I was getting tons and tons of phone calls. I was getting stuff in the mail. And my credit report, they wouldn't freeze it. I asked my credit, all three credit reporting bureaus to freeze it. But they said, we need the police report first to freeze it. Well, they didn't want to give me my police report because they were still working on it, right? So, um, what else? So, I was stressed out. This, this went on for like a year and a half. I had nightmares. I was losing sleep. And my credit score, my credit score was out. It's outstanding now. But at the time, it was outstanding. And my credit score was like almost 800, like 798. And it just, he, he made it drop. Like, he would apply for like a Dillard's credit card like 20 times a day. That, that is like how aggressive. And I got my, my uh, credit report. And it was like Dillard's, 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 Chase Bank, Chase Bank, Chase Bank. So one of the things also happened was, is I have a Capital One. I have two Capital One credit cards. Well, I opened up my Capital One app and it had three on there. And I'm like, three? I only have two accounts. So I called up Capital One and they're like, well, we just want to congratulate you, sir, on your new credit card. But I'm like, hold up. I'm like, I only have two credit cards with you. I said, I've been the victim of identity uh, theft. I was like, if, and and I got a, I got approved for like a really high, I mean, extremely high limit. So he must have lied and said that I that I make like an insane amount of money or whatever at some job or something. I don't know. I found out later though, because I did get a hold of some applications. He was putting my name and then I worked for, for, um, a made cleaning company or that I'm the owner of a made cleaning company and he was putting his address and he was putting the application that I filled it out and put my name but then that but underneath there it would say do you want to add someone onto your account like you know how like in a parent says I'm the main account holder but I'll actually get another card for my son or for my spouse or my best friend or whatever which I wouldn't recommend doing that um, that's what he was doing. So he'd be getting two cards in, to his address, one in my name and one in his. Well, he would discard mine. He can't use, why use it? And then he would use mine. But the thing is, he never got a credit card because every time someone called me, I said, don't, um, send those out. And the Capital One had already been sent out. And I'm like, you better like close down on the account. Looking back on it, I wish I would have never did that because he would have gotten that credit card. And he would have maxed it out, and then now he'd be in prison, still in prison, for like grand theft, I believe it was called. 
but I kept catching it. That's why I didn't get no sleep. And this happened for a year and a half. And the 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 the, uh, the police wasn't wasn't working for me. They finally gave me my credit report, but it wasn't signed, and it wasn't dated. And I noticed that it wasn't. Well, first I noticed. First I didn't know no, nothing. I sent it to the credit report bureaus, and they said this is not valid because it's not dated. So then I went back to the police department, and I was like, "Look, you didn't even date this." They're like, "Oh, sorry." So they dated it. Then I then I faxed all three credit report bureaus again, and they're like, "Oh, but it's not signed." So then I went back and they're like, well, we can't sign it because it's still under investigation. I'm like, I cannot freeze my credit report. I was like, he was ruining my credit. I went from 798 down to like extremely low. I don't know how low it got, but it got low. And um, another thing too is he actually convinced the credit reporting bureau because th- let me tell you what happened. I called the credit reporting bureau and I got a voicemail and it said, your credit report um, mailed to this address should be still coming and blah, 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 blah. So I I got a hold of customer service. I was like, what, what? I was like, I tried to get a hold of you. I said, but I got a little message saying that my credit report has already been sent out to this address. I was like, you know, that address that you're sending to is the address to the person who stole my identity. I was like, how did you even let this happen? I was like, how did you allow him to call in or go online, pretend to be me and get my credit report? I know, I mean, it's bad enough he knows my information. It's bad enough he's applying for all this. I said, but now he knows what my credit report's going to look like. He knows all my credit cards, everything, right? Because I have quite a bit of few credit cards, and I'm very responsive with them. That's why I have, you know, good credit. And at my age, it took me a long time to build that, you know? And, um... And they're just like, well, it's too late. Like, we can't stop the print- printer or whatever. Like, it goes through the computer and then this printer and then the people in the mailroom, whatever. Either way, they couldn't stop it. I was like, so he's going to kick my credit report. I was like, seriously? You know, like, you let this happen? So, um, it was just one thing after the other. And um, I'm probably missing some things because it happened over five years ago and it's raining. So, um, it's kind of like making my depression go down even worse, which is hard for me to think. But, um... So, I went to the D, 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 A, DEA or DA office. I can't even say it now. DEA office, DA office. Anyway, I went there several times because my investigator wasn't doing his job. And I was like, y'all need to get him. I was like, he's ruining my life. And I was like, and y'all need to get me my, my, um, my uh, police report so I can put a freeze. I was like, he is literally ruining, ruining my credit, ruining everything, right? So, um, they didn't really do anything and it got so bad that I went down there and I started to scream and holler. They had security come and I was like, F you, F you. I I was, I had enough. I was like, I'm tired of this. I was like, it got so bad. Let me tell, let me tell you what happened. I went online to pay my electric bill and it said I have two electric bills. One at this address that I leave, live in another address billed to me. I even told that investigator, I said, evidently, Jason has probably shacked up and living with some people and probably convinced them that, hey, I'll pay the electric bill. And then with my personal information, my social security number and everything, he applied for um, TXU. Well, I already have TXU. So it's just going to go on my existing account and now I have two bills. I said, why can't you or someone else go to that address? He's probably there and you can arrest him. How do you know he's there, Mr. Uh, uh, I was going to say my last name, Mr. So-and-so, um, to me. And he was like, like, he was trying to, like, make out, like, I did it. Like, I was behind it. I'm like, you're not doing the work. You're not making phone calls. You're not doing nothing. I'm the one who's gathering all this evidence. I, I, w- I would be going to the police department sometimes every single day. I, because I had phone calls after phone calls of companies contacting me. Did you apply for this? Did you apply for that? I'm like, no, I didn't. And I would write down the information. I'm like, who are you? I'm with the fraud department, with the credit bureau fraud department, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this is under investigation. Like, have the police call me at this number and we'll be able to submit to them the, uh, the application. No, Mm-mm. no, he wouldn't call them. He wouldn't do nothing. Like I said, I had that real nice lady contact him, leave him voicemails, and then I talked to her, and she was like, I've been desperately leaving voicemail after voicemail to your investigator, and he is not calling me. And we cannot just give you the fraudulent application because because 
If you had said that you made the application, you have every right to the application. But because you're admitting that you didn't do it, now it's considered a crime and that's evidence and we can't give that to you. Which to this day makes no sense to me. That makes no sense to me at all. It really does not. It doesn't. But she finally felt sorry for me. And she goes, I'm not supposed to do this. I hope I don't lose my job. She was like, but I'm going to send you the application. She sent me an application, and that's exactly what it said, what I said earlier. It had my name as if I'm applying for this credit card, right? It said send to this address, which was his address, with his phone number of contact information, okay? How they contacted me, I'll talk to that later, I guess because they had it in the database that that's not my number. Um, and then I guess my mother's maid name too, which is odd because I never had a credit card with that company. So how would they know what my real number is and my, my real mother's maid name? I don't know, but either way it goes on there, it had his address as if I was applying for the credit card. And then it had on there, would you like another credit card, um, to like a relative or a friend or, you know, family member. And he put his name. So he'd be getting two credit cards in the mail. One for me, one for him. He would probably throw away the one for me because he ain't going to use it. And then, and then if they asked for an ID, but then who would be responsible for that account? Me, of course. So I finally submitted that to him. And he was like, you see, Mr. So-and-so, see how easy that was? I was like, easy. This has been going on for a year and a half. A year and a half. It took me a year and a half to get, this, to get one fraudulent application. So anyway, um, I made that big stink at the DEA's office. I'm like yelling and screaming, something needs to be, to be done. And I'm, I'm tired of my investigator, Mr. Preston is his name. And my investigator, Mr. Preston, I was like, he's not doing his job and everything. And then so um, the very next day, the, the DEA's office called me and said, we have uh, Jason um, in custody. I'm like, well, good. Well, then it gets better, but not for me. So... One of the things he stole was my Lowe's gift card that had like almost $800 on it. Um, and he had bought, he bought a whole bunch of security cameras and all kinds of stuff. And that's another thing too. My investigator accused me of doing that. He's like, how do I know that? I was like, well, then come to my house. I don't have any security cameras. He goes, well, you could easily hide them in the garage or something. I'm like, really? Really? Do you still think it's me doing this? And he also accused me of sleeping with him. He was just like, well, did, did you have a sexual relationship with him? I'm like, what is different? What, what, what? No. And even if I did, the question is that I give him permission to use my identity to apply for credit cards and stuff. And the answer is no, I did not. I did not. But no, I didn't sleep with him. We're just good friends. That's it. And seriously, I'm not making it up. We were, we were just good friends. Obviously, not anymore now. So, um... Come to find out, he already had a warrant out for his arrest for writing hot checks. Am I shocked? Am I shocked? Um, when I talked to the lady at the DA's office, she told me, I said, is he a repeat offender? She goes, well, she was like, let's put it this way. Um, no, basically, she basically told me that I'm not his first victim, that he's done this before. She said, but unfortunately, he already served his time in the past. I was like, so he's already stolen other people's identity and did this before, and she was like, mm. well, yeah, she said yes, right? And so, he's a repeat offender, and he has a warrant out for his arrest for writing hot checks when they finally found him. Instead of sending him to jail or prison, he just waited in the county jail for a while. And while you're waiting in county jail, that goes towards your time. So when you finally get in trouble, if you've been waiting in county jail for a year, when you finally get in trouble, they take that year off. So if you're in county jail for a year, but they lock you up for two years, they're only going to lock you up for one year because you already served your time in county jail for a year. Okay? So um, I wanted to be at the trial. And they said, well, if he it says that he's not guilty, you can be at the trial and, and do your case. Well, he didn't say not guilty. He, he, he did a plea bargain, I guess. He said guilty or whatever. At least that's what the DA's office told me. I said, I want a restraining order against him. And all he did was get on probation. That's it. Probation. Why? Well, he never got any of those credit cards because I stopped him. Now, if he would have gotten those credit cards, especially the one with Capital One, which was an insanely high credit card limit, he would have gotten in you know, bigger trouble. So, um, oh, it gets way worse. So much more stuff happened. 
So he was supposed to pay me restitution of like, I think it was $20 a month or $20 a week. I don't know. For, because he had stole my Lowe's um, gift card, which was like around $800 or so, right? But they said it was only $500, which was a lie. So um, I got one check in the mail from him. And it wasn't even the full $20. I think it was like $10 or something, right? Because he's supposed to be working on probation to make money to pay the restitution to me. So um, I got that one thing. And then also he contacted me. So I called his probation officer. I said, why is he contacting me? I said, he's not supposed to contact me. Really, really ghetto. She was like, oh, uh, was you his boyfriend? I'm like, no, I wasn't his boyfriend. She was so unprofessional, right? Then, I st then I'm, st getting, I'm still getting calls from places because he had gotten, um, what is it? A loan. He got loans. He got this one from Advant, Advant, Avant, Avant Credit. He had gotten a loan of like, I don't know how much, I don't remember how much it was. And I was getting this stuff in the mail because they finally found out where I really live, you know. And they're like, oh, well, you owe us this money. And I call, I contacted this place, right? This is after already he had gotten in trouble. And then, well, he got, on, he got in trouble, got on probation. Then he wrote more hot checks, okay? So he couldn't pay me restitution, and then he finally went to jail. But he didn't go to jail that long. I think it was like maybe a year or maybe, I think on good behavior, I think I found out from the DA's office that he was only in jail for like eight months. I'm like, that's it? Well, while he's in jail, and then also when he got out, okay, I got all kinds of stuff. I was still getting stuff in the mail, because you think about it. If someone steals your identity, right, and puts their address, and then they don't pay the bill... It takes a while for them to find out where you really live. So later on, I was getting things in the mail saying, you owe us money for this, you owe us money for that. So this one, a lot. This one was a, so this wasn't over. This was not even over. This went on and on, okay? So I called this one credit, Avant Credit. I was like, look, I've been a victim of identity theft. I was like, I can't prove that he also did this. I said, but I can tell you, I didn't do it. I said, I have the police report. I finally got the police report and it was signed and dated. I said, I got all this information. They didn't really care. It was so weird that they didn't even want the police report or nothing. I'm like, you don't, you don't want nothing. They're just like, well, it's fine. We believe you never. And I was like, but I was like, this is what I understand. I was like, how did this happen? They're like, well, a person, okay went online and used your information, okay, and because you have outstanding credit, got a loan in your name. I was like, right, but if you wrote him a check, how is he going to cash a check? It's, and they're like, no, 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 no. All we ask is for an online checking account to deposit the money into. We don't send a check. I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, so you mean to tell me he used my information, applied for a loan, got approved because I have excellent credit and they don't know it's him that's applying and that he, they don't know that's not me, right? And then it says, congratulations, Mr. So-and-so, you get approved, which is to me, but he's seeing it because I'm not applying for it. What checking account would you like this money deposit in? And then he gives his checking account and you don't check on that to make sure that's not mine. And they said, by law, we cannot find out. We can't, that's information that we can't find out. We just assume that that was your checking account. I'm like, you're going to go after him? Are you, are you going to go after him? Because he needs to go back to jail. No. Mm -mm. No. Not at all. Then it got really worse. Then I got a thing in the mail from Sprint. Oh, boy, this is getting long. I got a thing in the mail from Sprint. Oh, this is, this is so stressful. I got a thing in the mail from Sprint because he got a Galaxy whatever phone. Okay, Galaxy 4, whatever. I don't know. I mean, got service with Sprint. And so um, I got a thing in the mail saying, you all this money. So I contacted the fraud department with Sprint. I'm like, I never got, I've never had your service. I've never gotten a phone. I was like, that wasn't me, right? So they're telling me, they're like, well, you have to go to a corporate Sprint store, okay? And give us all the information that you can that can help this case, like the police report, your name, your address, Proof where you, that you've lived at this address and not the other address that they sent the phone to, right? As much possible information you can give me. Give us. And I'm like, that's fine. I was like, I can't give you too much and get scared that I'll get in trouble because 
I didn't do anything wrong. I was like, so the more information I give you, the better. So like, well, you have to go to a corporate store. So I go to the corporate store because they, they said you have to go to the corporate store and have them fax us to the fraud department. Okay. Why I couldn't go to a bank or somewhere else to fax it, I don't know. But they said you have to go to a corporate store, bring the police report, bring all documentation. I had my birth certificate. I had everything, right? And they said, just have them send to, uh, send to this. They gave me the phone number. They said, have the corporate Sprint store in your town fax to this number all that information. But they don't, the store is not going to handle it. We're handling it because we're the fraud department. I was like, okay. So I go to the Sprint store and they don't believe me. They're like, well, we think you're trying to pull a fast one. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm not trying to prove to you I'm innocent or guilty. I'm just up here to give you this paperwork and all you have to do is fax it to the fraud department. Whether I'm pulling a fast one or whatever, that's between me and the fraud department. You don't, you're not making that determination, okay? The fraud department is not asking you to go over my documents. I'm just here for you to fax my documents. And they said point blank that they feel that I was the one who got the phone and then I'm trying to get out of it. And I said, okay, you can feel that way. You have every right to feel that way. You're, you're lot, you're, you're not, you're wrong, you know, but whether it's right or wrong or you're right or wrong, or whatever, just fax the information to the fraud department. That's all I was told. The fraud department told me, go to the corporate store and have them fax your documents. And that was it. They wouldn't give me back my documents. No. They said, we're holding these documents. I'm like, you're holding my driver's license, my police report, my, my birth certificate, my proof of address, my electric bill, my water bill. I had all this stuff to prove that I've been living here all this time or whatever, you know. I never got no physical phone, you know. Um, so I called the police. I said, well, I'm going to call the police on y'all. And they're like, why are you going to call the police? I was like, because you have my stuff. I was like, you expect me to go home and leave my driver's license and my my birth certificate? I think I even had my passport. I'm like, and you won't give me about my stuff. I was like, you're 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 accusing me of stealing when I didn't do anything. You're stealing. So the police came and they said, you need to get out get, get out of the store. Um, this is private property. And the police is like, you kind of have to get out. I was like, I was like. They got my stuff. So I'm sitting out there outside. And the police comes out there. I was like, can you please give me my shit? He goes, well, they think that you are not Mr. So-and-so. I'm like, you got. I was like, you want to call up on my friends? I was like, you want to go to the police department? I was like, the police department knows what's going I was like, what is going on here? I said, I don't care what you think. I don't care what they think. Just fax the shit over to the fraud department of Sprint and they will make the determination and run the investigation. It is not their job. It's not pressure on them to do an investigation. All they had to do was fax the paperwork. That is it. He's like, I, I believe you are who you say you are. I'm like, thank God. Now he came this, this, now that's another thing. This Sprint corporate store was in the next town over. So the police came from that store. I said, call the town that I live in and contact that. The, the police report is here. They will tell you I'm the victim of identity. This is an ongoing thing. He I looks at the date and he was like, well, this happened uh, so and so long ago. I was like, I didn't get this information from Sprint. You don't realize he got this shit in my name. They sent him a physical cell phone to a different address. It took over a year for them to find out where I really live. Then send me the bill. I mean, you can't put two and two together. It's not like I waited, right? So I went back to the police in my town and said, I, it ain't over yet. They're like, well, we'd have to run in another investigation and we'd have to prove that he also did this as well. And uh, I'm just like, oh, my, nobody wants to help me. So anyway, so anyway, at the Sprint corporate store, um, the police finally got my paperwork and he handed it to me. And I was like, did they fax it? He goes, I think they did. I was like, you know, I could press charges against them for theft, you know, for holding documentation. You know, I was like, I was like, did you explain to them that you don't think that I'm doing anything wrong? Like, why would I was like, and even if I am, 
I called the police on my, why would I call the police? Hello? And then after that, I still got more stuff. I got still, uh, companies would contact me via the mail. And um, this one, this one, he got a really big loan two towns over. And that lady was so trashy. She was like, you must have really good credit. Was you dating him and this and that? Almost like his probation officer, the way she talked to me. I'm just like, you are so unprofessional. I was like, ma'am, I've been the victim of identity theft. I was like, you know, could you be a little bit more professional than this? Seriously? But that, I don't even, I don't want to get into that. I don't even want to get into that. There's so many people out there that I hate to say is, I really hate to say is, but they don't deserve the job that they have. They don't. They don't. People that are ghetto, that are unprofessional, you know, that talk like she did to me. Like, you work, you know, but whatever, you know. Anyway, that's my story on how my identity got stolen. And I probably left, I probably, no, I know I did. I left some other things out, um, you know, but um, it, 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 it was, it took a year and a half for them to arrest him. And this whole time he was ruining my credit. If I could go back in time, I would have never, st I wouldn't, like when Capital One, I would, when I saw that Capital One, I just would have been like, whatever. Let him get the credit card and dig himself in a big hole. You know, um, but, uh, I had to get on sleeping medicine. I had nightmares. I had to see my, my doctor because I had nightmares that he was going to come into the house and like hurt me or stab me or something, you know, whatever. Um, and to think that he's a repeat offender and he was already writing hot checks, you know, and then they just, you know, slap him on the wrist. And he didn't really get in much trouble at all. But, um, anyway, if you stayed for this whole video, thank you. I'm going to go back inside. I just got over, um, COVID-19, but I still feel like really under the weather. And I don't know if you can notice it's been, it's raining. Thank goodness it's not pouring down the rain. So I'm not going to get too soaked going in the inside. But until next time, I'll be an awesome day. <laughs> All right, and 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 keep keep seriously keep your stuff. See, I I have a credit freeze now on all three credit improvements. Not now, I've had it for some time now. I I literally froze my credit. But see, back in the day, it was harder to do that. You had to have proof, and it was just a big hassle uh, to freeze it and everything. Now it's like because so many people's identity and stuff. Like you, can, you don't need to be a victim of identity theft to prove it to have your credit froze now. It's just a, it's a bitch though to have to unfreeze it when you want to apply for something and that you have to jump through hoops with that. But what alternative do I have? Like he stole my identity. He could have sold or given my prudent information, like my social security number, et cetera, et cetera, to other people, either sold it or given it away. So the, you know, I'm sure my stuff's probably, well, I already know my stuff's on the dark web because I got a thing from my discovers card saying that we found your social security number on the dark web. And I'm like, so, yeah. Um, I think they need to implement more stronger things. Like, I think... I hate to say everyone's credit should be frozen, per se. But I think that it should be either... Fro everyone should be frozen or something like being frozen. Where you have to... In other words, when, when somebody applies for something in your name or, or an item is... A, when something is applied for in your name, you should have to do something to prove that it's you. And just to put a number, your social, like the water company and electric company has your social. Do you know how easy it is for your stuff to be out there? Like, it's really sad, but that's the world we live in, in you know? So, um, or maybe they should give you like a social, but a special number that you give. You don't give your social anymore. You give a special number that's tied to that social and you can change that number anytime you want. Like if you feel like it got out, you can change your number 
And that's always going to be tied to your social, but your social you don't give out anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like you tell the government, this is my social, and they say your number is 7942BBC. So every time you apply for something, you put 7924BBC. But at any time you feel like that number has been um, compromised, then they, then, they, then they delete that number and then give you Z1429. And then you use that on an application. You see what I'm saying? But only the company knows that that goes to your social security number to check your credit. That's what I think should happen. But that's just my opinion. Until next time, have an awesome day. Try to. I will. Bye-bye.